Praise be Jesus Christ, and thank you for joining me for this Animode short lesson in which we will be going through Article 9 of the Apostles' Creed, and we will be looking at the Old Testament card, One People, One Language, how it is fulfilled and points to the New Testament card, Communion of Saints, uh, particularly in this lesson, asking the question, what is it that a Catholic does? Um, what are the obligations or the practices of a Catholic, what we would call a practicing or practical Catholic? And those would be Mass, Confession, Communion, as well as tithing, marriage laws of the church, and fasting. Um, these have to do with human nature of our desire to worship, um, our need for health, as well as our need for food. And, and so I want to kind of start with that. Um, there is a human desire, of course, to worship. Many times what happens is we end up worshiping material things. Uh, we, are, we end up worshiping the, the creation rather than the creator. Um, but also as humans, we need food and we need health, just like other animals. Um, Holy Mother Church is our mother. That's why she's called that, Holy Mother Church. And what would a mother, what would a good parent want for her children? All of her children, the baptized faithful, would be definitely health and food. This is the prayer of most parents is that we have food on the table and that all my children are healthy. This is what the church wants for us, her faithful. They, she wants us um, to be able to have a healthy soul and so therefore confession is a precept, a law of the church. Uh, a faithful Catholic must confess their sins at least once a year. The key there to focus on is at least. We should of course go more regularly and that's been recommended all the time. Um, we also need food. We need food for the soul, and that, of course, is our Lord himself in the Blessed Sacrament. He gives himself to us body, uh, blood, soul, and divinity at communion. And then, of course, since there is that temptation to worship self and there is the temptation to worship material, um, we, we have the obligation to worship Jesus Christ um, and worship him the way in which he has asked to worship. And that obligation is to attend Mass every Sunday, as well as holy days. Um, the tithing is basically contributing to the needs of the church. This is typically done uh, in a monetary fashion of, of um, giving to your local parish. Then your parish uh, does things with that. Um, if you want more information on all of these, it's gonna be in the video called Catholic Life. So this is just an overview, um, but you can get into the details there with the code of canon law and things. Um, regarding marriage, it's very simple. We have marriage laws in the church. Uh, marriage is um, in instituted by God, and the church is the supreme authority um, over marriage. And, and with marriage, it's basically two rules that you can think of to make it easy. The sexual act within marriage and marriage within the church. Uh, marriage within the church is a law for at least one of the parties is a baptized Catholic. Fasting uh, would include primarily fasting on Friday, no meat on Friday throughout the year. Um, there are some exceptions and you can look at the other video for that, but pretty much uh, fasting on Friday, no meat the entire year. Why do we fast on Friday? Uh, Friday is the day that Jesus gave his flesh for us, so we give up our flesh meat for him. As we go into the second column, we can see that this is the column of penance, a penitential life, the actions of prayer, almsgiving, fasting, and sacrifice. And we, we typically think of these as being done during the 40 days of Lent, but in actuality, a practicing Catholic can also be a penitential Catholic, a person of penance. And why is it that we do penance? Well, it, it conforms to Christ. That's the number one thing. We are Christians, and so we are a little Christ. We want to conform to the likeness of Christ. And th these are the actions of Christ. Um, but also they atone and, and, and do penance, make up for uh, the damage due to our forgiven sin or the debt due to our forgiven sin. Um, in the penance and purgatory lesson, we talk about GPS. Uh, G would be good works. Um, uh, P would be prayer, and then uh, the S would be the sacrifice or fasting. And so in this case, you could think of the good works as the almsgiving, uh, the, the, the P as prayer, of course, and then uh, the sacrifice there. G, P, S are penitential acts. And this is important, um, again, that, that prayer is a, a daily obligation um, that we need to have. Uh, St. Paul tells us to pray unceasingly, so there's so many different ways to prayer. You can see that Mass is our number one prayer in the first column, but in addition to Mass, a, a Catholic should be praying and praying daily. 
In addition to tithing, which is the obligation, we can also make alms. Alms would be giving to the poor, giving to our community, giving to religious orders, uh, things where we're, we're giving and being generous in that way. And then, of course, we have the fasting and the sacrifice, which more conforms to Christ and the sacrificial nature of Christ. Taking things uh, to the third column, we have the evangelical councils of obedience, poverty, and chastity. These are connected to religious orders. Uh, these are the, the councils that a religious would take. And to some extent, even our diocesan priests um, also take these. Even though they may not have an, uh, poverty, they would ta take a vow of simplicity. Uh, I don't know if it's actually a vow, but, but simplicity instead of poverty. So let's go through what this would look like uh, for ex what we would think of as a monk or a nun. A monk or a nun is obedient to their superior. Um, they enter into a life of poverty. This can be different, uh, more strict or less, depending on their order that they're in. And then chastity, um, they're going to be celibate people. Uh, why, why is that important? They're giving them themselves completely undividedly to Christ. Uh, a nun, for instance, is a bride of Christ. And a, a monk, especially if they're a priest, uh, would, would be imitating Christ and give themselves entirely to the church. So these are so beautiful. And they're actually, in a sense, um, going to a, a heroic degree here if lived out. What about a diocesan priest? Well, a diocesan priest, of course, has obedience to their bishop. Um, they may not be called to poverty, but, but, but simplicity, have a simple life, not extravagant. And chastity, of course, they are celibate man giving themselves completely to their parish in any parish or any duty that they will be given throughout um, their, their duties as a priest. Um, now, is this just for priests? Is this just for religious? Is it just for the monk or the nun? Or do lay people also, can they, can they be living these things out? And of course, everyone is obedient to someone. Um, you have children obedient to, to uh, their parents. You have uh, you know, a wife that's obedient to her husband. You have people that are obedient to their, their bosses. Um, and so everyone has a level of obedience. And if you think you're not obedient to anyone, you definitely are obedient to the church and obedient to God himself. And so there is always that level of obedience. Also, in some extent, everyone has to um, have a level of poverty. We don't get everything that we want. And we are all called to be chaste according to our state in life. Whether we are married, whether we are single, or whether we are religious, we always have to have this pure heart, and we have to be willing to give ourselves first and foremost to Christ. And by giving ourselves to Christ, that means that um, we, we have rules on how we would give ourselves to others. In other words, a single person could not give themselves to any other, way, any other person in a sexual way. Um, giving themselves to Christ obligates them to then be married or enter into a celibate life and, and remain chaste. So chastity is very important in that area. In the first column we see these are the bare minimum, the good column, then there's the better, then there's the best. Um, why is it called this? Um, well, the first column are the precepts, the laws. They're binding on every Catholic. Then we have the penitential life and of course the evangelical councils. And so why is this title, you know, why is the title of this lesson good, better, best? Well, to be a good Catholic, a practicing Catholic, a practical Catholic, you would need to follow that first column. There are no exceptions to this. Everyone needs to follow that first column. Of course, we can go to a better, uh, not just good, but we can move into the good and the better. Uh, we can't move into the better column and give up the first, but we have that good column first. And then we start to challenge ourselves. Uh, perhaps I'm going to Mass every Sunday, but then I want to challenge myself to pray throughout the week. Maybe even form a rule of prayer for my life, spiritual reading, the rosary, etc. And so I move from just the bare minimum to extra penance. Penance for myself, penance for those in purgatory, penance for sinners within the world, and we start to go above and beyond. Um, and then we can even take it deeper to um, the call that we see even in the Gospels, the evangelical councils, people that have been called to a stricter obedience, poverty, and chastity, this would be, of course, as we said earlier, this would be the religious life, the priesthood, um, but also um, lay people can kind of enter into these things uh, with paying attention to how obedient you are, um, how, how, how much you embrace poverty, and how you live out chastity to a heroic degree, depending on your state in life. These practices are given for the good of the faithful, and they help us against concupiscence, the concupiscence of 
power, possessions, and pleasure. Concupiscence simply means that we lean away from God, that there's this attraction, this desire, this gravity to go, in a sense, away from God and into ourself, uh, the devil, the flesh, the world, the self, and there's just this pull on us. And the pull really is threefold. And uh, actually, St. John the Apostle says this beautifully. If you want to read 1 John 2.16, he talks about the concupiscence that we have towards power, possessions, and pleasure. You see how all of these nine practices, uh, or these, these nine areas in the columns, how they all combat that. Of course, uh, worshiping God, going to confession, and then showing that humility through confession, and then receiving our Lord, praying in obedience, all of those in that, in that first row really help us combat the concupiscence of power. If you look down at the second row now, the tithing, the alms, and the poverty, all of those help us battle the concupiscence of possessions. And then practicing sexual act within marriage, marriage within the church, the fasting, the sacrifice, the chastity, all of these things, um, they help us to combat the concupiscence towards pleasure. So power, possessions, and pleasure are the things that will pull us down. All of these practices in the columns of good, better, best, the laws, the penance, the councils, help us to then pull ourselves towards God and with his grace elevate ourselves, change, transform, and elevate. Um, and so that's really key. Another place you can find these uh, concupiscence, power, possessions, and pleasure is you can find them in uh, Genesis 3.6, all the way at the beginning, Genesis 3.6, because these are the temptations that Satan uses against Eve. And then you see them again um, when Satan tempts Jesus in the desert. Uh, power, throw yourself down from the temple, right? Possession, all this you can have if you just bow down and worship me. And then pleasure, turn these stones into bread. Um, another thing that you can see in this, not just the threefold concupiscence, but you can see that these also um, battle some of the seven deadly sins, particularly four of those seven. Pride would be connection, connected to that first column. Um, in other words, a prideful person doesn't bow down and worship Jesus at Mass every single week, giving, uh, giving God 52 to 60 uh, days of your year. A prideful person typically doesn't accuse themselves of their sins and examine their conscience and go to confession. And a prideful person doesn't present themselves to be uh, in union with Christ without wanting to bow down and serve him. Uh, we see greed is combated by the tithing, um, also the almsgiving and the poverty that, that, were, that controls greed. Uh, lust is controlled, again, by the marriage laws, that we have the sexual act within marriage, marriage within the church. And then gluttony is combated by the fasting. Uh, fasting means that, of course, we can either give up a certain food, uh, maybe no meat on a certain day, or we can also give up the quantity. Uh, so we can say, I'm going to eat less of something. So give something up entirely or uh, eat less of something. These are all good things, of course, but I'm choosing to deprive myself um, either completely or um, in a quantity uh, through fasting and abstaining. Thank you for joining me for this lesson on the Animode Shorts, uh, where we have been discussing Article 9 of the Apostles' Creed, the Communion of Saints, and we've looked at the Old Testament card, One People, One Language, and how it is fulfilled with the New Testament card, Communion of Saints. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen.